All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. This is my boomstick. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Bruce Campbell performances. Oh, I never knew life could be so swell. Well, once you've made love to Bruce Campbell, way, eh, you never go back. <laughs> for this list, we're taking a look at those performances that show off this B-movie king at his finest and most memorable. <laughs> I think it's your cue. Thank you. Number 10, Smitty, the Hudsucker Proxy. What's the months? Holy moly. Playing a 50s movie style newspaper man, quick with a quip or a cigarette, Bruce Campbell brings life to an otherwise forgettable background character in this Coen Brothers screwball comedy. Adnoids. Lumbago. That guy's got whiskers on it. Playing the sidekick to Jennifer Jason Lee's star writer, Smitty seems happy to have a job and serves as a calming influence, for the most part, to his hot tempered colleagues. Amy Sanchez are usually pretty good, Chief. We just wish there was more of Smitty to go around. Then smack us, let's grab a highball. Number nine, Autolycus, Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, and Xena, Warrior Princess. Autolycus is my name. The self-proclaimed king of thieves with a heart of gold, he became so popular that despite decisions to no longer feature him in Xena after the second season, fans demanded and were rewarded with Autolycus's return. <laughs> ah, even the great Hercules is no match for the King of Thieves. <laughs> Equally sarcastic and heroic, it seemed like the character was created just for Bruce. That's all right, I'll get it back. After all, I am the King of Thieves. In both Hercules and Xena, Bruce seems to be capable of wearing any goofy getup or uttering any strange line. Uh, yes, yes, I'm enraged. Why, if there was ever a moment where I was more enraged, I, I haven't found it yet. And yet he was still taken seriously as a comedic character. And who's your colorful friend? I am Autolycus, the king of Thebes. Number eight, the Surgeon General of Beverly Hills, Escape from L.A. The Surgeon General of Beverly Hills. When fans found out there was going to be a sequel to Escape from New York, they began salivating for its release. These are no good. You couldn't give them away. That was until they actually saw the film, with its cheesy acting and goofy sequences that did not live up to the original. There was one scene that combined the creepiness and over-the-top nature of the first film, and it also happens to be Bruce Campbell at his scariest. Now these two, they look very good. Here he plays a plastic surgeon who uses the bodies of the living against their will to provide his patients and himself with a new appearance. What a beautiful blue eye. Shame he only has one. You would have been forgiven if you didn't realize who it was on first sight. One eye is better than none. Number seven, Bruce Campbell, my name is Bruce. First of all, kid, Mr. Campbell makes soup. My name is Bruce. Bruce Campbell's professional career since the 80s has mostly been as an actor. Now, if an actor's life is like a painting, then it's a work in progress, but how can I create my great masterpiece if my paint is drying up, my canvas is cracked, and all my brushes are covered with a fake monster blood? What some people don't realize, though, is that for many years, he's made a second career out of being himself. This is Bruce Campbell, actor extraordinaire. Whether that entails writing autobiographies or making appearances, it is clear that Bruce has made a lot of money playing him. Keep it under a million and a half, get one name actor, and if you go straight to DVD, you might break even now. Fuck off, Mr. Campbell. So it seemed like a natural progression to combine directing, producing, and playing himself, and that is what happened in this movie. <sighs> Who does she think she is? Think I'm some low-budget, two-bit actor. Playing a B-movie star brought in by a small town to rid it of a supernatural menace, Campbell seamlessly combines fear, disbelief, false bravado, and heroism in this comedy horror. I've gotten a lot of use out of chainsaws over the years. Killed a lot of zombies. 
saved a lot of lives. But at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, <laughs> they're just too damn heavy. Number six, the Mater D, Spider-Man 3. Bonsoir. Le Monsieur attire une réservation. Bruce Campbell and director Sam Raimi were childhood friends who remain close to this day. So when it came time for Raimi to bring Spider-Man to life, it made sense for him to give his friend a new spotlight in the series. After he played a wrestling ring announcer in the first film and a snooty usher in the second, fans of the series began to keep their eyes peeled for the next cameo. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No one will be seated after the doors are closed. In the third film, Bruce's comedic timing made a scene that could have bombed for many fans. Ah, here we are. Table for two. Back out. It's just a shame he hasn't been featured in the new series of films. Take good care of the ring. Oh, we with my life, monsieur. S'il vous plaît? Oui? I like you. <laughs> Number five. Mayor Shelbourne, cloudy with a chance of meatballs. As your mayor, I know it's time to put our sardine canning past behind us and look to the future. With a voice that smooth and expressive, it seems criminal that Bruce has not been sought out for more voiceover work. I want to be big. I want people to look at me and say, that is one big mayor. Playing a boastful and arrogant mayor may not have been a huge stretch for the actor, but not being able to rely on his pliable facial features and physical comedy may have been. A pizza stuffed inside a turkey, the whole thing deep fried and dipped in chocolate. It's me, the mayor. Ultimately serving as the computer animated comedy's main antagonist, Bruce's voice allowed him to be amusing the entire time that we root against him. Who's hungry? Welcome, tourists, to Chew and Swallow. That is one big mayor. Number four, Briscoe County Jr., The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Then who are you? Briscoe County. Is that where you're from? No, ma'am, that's who I am. When a show runs for one season in an unenviable Friday night time slot before being canceled, it is likely that it will fade away into obscurity. Any final words, Senor Briscoe County Jr.? Yeah, I didn't do it. This show, however, had one major thing going for it, the ravenous fans of Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Briscoe. <gasps> Thanks, Comet. And just for your information, all apples grow on trees. So instead, the titular cocksure cowboy is fondly remembered by devotees of the sci-fi western. If this show hadn't been given one of the worst time slots of the week, I could be here all day. Who knows how long it would have run and how many more people would have discovered its talented star. Hi. Come on, Dad. Oh, Bye. Number three, Elvis Presley, Sebastian Half, Bubba Hotep. But I prefer Mr. Presley or Elvis. I keep telling you that. I don't go by Sebastian Half anymore, okay? With characters like Elvis Presley, who is now living in a nursing home after faking his death, and his African-American friend who believes he's JFK. President Kennedy was a white man. That's how clever they are. They dyed me this color all over. Both of whom end up fighting an Egyptian mummy, it's not surprising this comedy horror needs a special actor to make it happen. Oh, he my ass. There isn't any mummy from Egypt. Nice knowing you, Elvis. Luckily for us all, the filmmakers made the smart decision to cast Bruce, an actor who seems capable of making the truly ludicrous work. Just what are you getting at, Elvis? I think you know what I'm getting at, Mr. President. We're gonna kill us a mummy. This film and its star, despite the ridiculous premise, deserve far more credit than they received on its release. Big check on that, baby. Pulling off the comedy as well as the physicality of a man of far greater years than him, Mr. Campbell did the nearly impossible and succeeded. Sign for ACT, I win. <laughs> Number two, Sam Axe, Burn Notice. I'm not exactly security clearance material anymore. Yet again, bringing his skills to the small screen. 
Bruce's co-starring role in this long-running series certainly earned the man a legion of new fans and helped cement his already loyal following. I'm sorry, Mike, I, I don't know what to say. Bringing his trademark humor and timing to the espionage world, there is little question that the show would have paled in comparison without him. Well, I guess that's something to think about during the long nights in our cells. A character strong enough to warrant his own TV movie spin-off. It's safe to say that fans couldn't get enough of this former Navy SEAL. Thank you. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Charles, did you really find it? Chemically flawless, blue diamond Eluvia. I'm Ivan. I'm a doctor. A doctor? What's that? I heal people. How about a shave, sailor? Been thinking about it, sir. You're not getting off the mountain, Greek. Oh, I'm not. Well, in case no one's told you yet, I have many sweet faces in front of me. Apparently, there are some terrorists with plutonium on the top of the mountain. I love you, William. I love you too, Jackie. Number one. Ashley J. Ash Williams, The Evil Dead Franchise. Oh, you bastards! Why are you torturing me like this? Why? There is no other role that could ever eclipse this one for Bruce, as it was playing Ash that gave him the chance to be a professional actor. Swallow this. This reluctant horror hero has some of the best one-liners in cinema history, such as... See this? This is my boomstick! And... Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Among many others. Yo, she-bitch. Let's go. Starring in the first original three films, including a notable Bad Ash performance in Army of Darkness. I'm Bad Ash, and you're Good Ash. You're a goody little two-shoe. And later cameoing in the closing credits of the 21st century reboot and uttering just one word. Groovy. We knew there was no question the man would still be working on screen to this day. Hail to the king, baby. Do you agree with our list? I don't think so. What's your favorite Bruce Campbell performance? All right, man, let's go. For more acting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. What could be a better ending than that? <laughs> <laughs>